Snoring is a natural phenomenon and it occurs a lot as we get older because everything here in our jaw relaxes and our tongue can fall back, obstructing our airway or causing us not to have enough air going in and out. And we snore, so we make a sonorous noise. <sighs> try to get the air out. Some of us even stop breathing in the middle of the night. Snoring can be really embarrassing. It was for me. I didn't want to admit that I snored until I was vacationing with a friend and she said she didn't get any sleep the night before because my snoring was so loud. I still didn't believe her, so I got a snoring app which I put on my phone and it recorded me every night and I could see that, boy, I am a snorer and it's pretty loud. I tried everything. I tried the mouth guards. I tried nose plugs. I tried the nasal strips. I tried sleeping with my head on six pillows. Nothing worked. I finally talked to a friend whose partner snores and she said, you know, when her partner finally got CPAP, it sounded kind of like white noise. And so she was able to fall asleep and stay asleep instead of being jolted awake by this snoring. So I went to see my sleep doctor and I did a home sleep study where they I put this thing on my forehead every night for two nights and it recorded my sleep. It also recorded that I was not breathing in the middle of the night. And um, I had enough of those events that I qualified to be prescribed a CPAP machine. So I wanna show you what it is. And normally I don't talk about my own personal experience, but I thought it was important because so often we're embarrassed, especially if you're a woman, we don't wanna believe that this could happen to us. Um, and yet now that I've been using CPAP for a full year, I sleep better, I have more energy, my dark circles aren't quite so dark. So let me show you what my CPAP machine looks like. And it stays here by the bed and uh, it's pretty small, okay? And on the back, it has a tube. That tube is attached to a very long, very, very long flexible cord and then a face mask. So this part comes, up, comes up off and you can replace these. This plugs back in. And then this goes, as a woman, um, I don't have a full face mask. This goes into my nose like this at night. This is not very attractive and it is not something that um, most of us want to be seen wearing. But the air is forced in through the nose and as long as our mouth is shut, then uh, the air goes into our lungs and we don't stop breathing. I also have to wear this which is uh, a chin strap. So the chin strap goes like this and it keeps my chin closed because otherwise when the air goes in, if your mouth's not closed, the air will come straight out. So it's like this. Again, not very attractive. But what I do is I wait till I'm ready to go to sleep. And um, if I'm traveling with someone or if I'm in a situation where there's other people around, I wait till the lights are off and then I put on my mask. This even worked when I traveled to Tanzania because I had a good um, source of electricity. And what I find is that, you know, you really have to wash these little nasal prongs. You have to wash them every day and you have to replace the equipment about every three to six months but it has really changed my life. And it took about three weeks for me to notice that I had a lot more energy. I was waking up feeling much more refreshed at night. And yes, when you first start using a CPAP, whatever kind you have, whether it's a full face mask or just nasal prongs, it takes about two to three days and sometimes a week or so to get used to the idea of this. Now, what I like about my CPAP machine is that it has a sensor. So when I first put it in, I get a very low flow of oxygen, but it senses when I fall fully asleep and then it gives me more pressurized air. So CPAP means continuous positive airway pressure, right? CPAP. So as I fall asleep, then I get continuous positive pressure 
that's going in and, and keeping my airway back here, keeping that open so that it can inflate my lungs and I get plenty of oxygen as I'm trying to sleep at night. So if you're snoring or if you know someone who's snoring, what do you do? Well, you might start by doing a snoring app to kind of validate and, and check that, yeah, I'm actually snoring. And then talk to your primary care provider or a sleep specialist so that you can get a sleep study. And I recommend the home ones if you can, if you can get that ordered for you, because it's really hard to sleep at a sleep center. It's all different. It's going to be a, a new experience and many people aren't able to sleep there. But if you can get a home sleep study, you'll go over it with your provider and then they can make recommendations for what's best for you. I am deeply embarrassed that I have to wear this at night, but I'm also at the same time very grateful that we have this kind of technology because when people have sleep apnea, when they are snoring, sometimes they stop breathing for long periods of time like one or two minutes, and then their body does this. <gasps> That's not good for your heart. And we know that people who have sleep apnea, who have periods of time or intervals when they're not breathing, they're much more likely to have a heart attack. And that, of course, is something we want to prevent. So while it is embarrassing and not exactly, you know, a sexy look at night, it is helping keep my heart healthy, helping me get plenty of oxygen so that I can be energetic and have a good day. I hope this has been helpful for you. And if, if it has, please click like and subscribe. Let me know how you're working on your CPAP or your partner, um, how it's going for them. And then leave a comment below or suggest any other topics you'd like me to cover. Take care and be well.